We have sound. All right, I'll close the door actually. If you feel the AC turn off, just let me know. Oh, yeah. I'll go turn it back on. Gucci. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so welcome to the podcast, Chilling with Iceberg. And tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Robert Anthony Duran. Everybody calls me Bobby. Um, my rap name was Bob D's back in the day. Um, I've come a long way, man. I'm 43 years old. Uh, definitely had my share of trials and tribulations growing up. A little hard upbringing on the, in the ghetto. But it's not where you start. It's where you finish. And I think my trajectory is going pretty good right now. As far as uh, where I came from... Single parent house, slash kid, always did my own thing. Um, played basketball with all the bigger kids all the time. But I always got exposed to like uh, more adult environments and atmospheres as a kid growing up. So I really grew up early, kind of had to in a way. Yeah, matured early. Yeah. So I always look at things from a different perspective than a lot of people, I think, because like just the way I see things from my perspective and my point of view. But I'm um, very humble person. Uh, very appreciative and helpful f towards people that I, I I I look up to, and you know even with the haters, dude, like you can't win them all, you know what I mean. So I just do me. I just focus on what I can do and how I can contribute uh, to better people and helping out anywhere I can. That's really who I am. Um, talk a little bit about the the rap. You said you used to rap. Yeah. So my whole childhood was all about like hip hop. Like I'd say my sophomore year in high school. Uh, I'd see people always like rapping on the lunch breaks and just battling each other like rap battle. So for me, it was pretty easy transition to your mama jokes to rap battling. And I always was in the back of the bus, you know, on the football team. And all we do is talk shit. It was just a way of life. Like the way in our culture that you show appreciation is like your Theo roasting you at yeah, the freaking barbecue. You know, so I knew at an early age I had to come with it, you know. So I was always quick with it, always come back. So... The rap battle just kind of like sunk right in. And it was crazy when I moved to um, Chico, mm -hmm. uh, Chico up north. Uh, it was right after the 8 Mile came out. So there's none but like white dudes up there that thought they could rap. It was fucking hilarious. And me just being like uh, analytical and very much a lyricist and always writing. Dude, the way I got into writing, I got to say, was fucking poetry. Low All key. Right. Uh, in like junior high, the first time I wrote a poem, and it was for my homie. He paid me five bucks to write a poem for his girl. And I always thought like I could be like a, a singer, like an R&B singer, because I loved R&B when I was a kid. So I'd write all these baby songs and stuff like that. And as a kid, that's just what I did. I don't know why, but, you know, it was just the way I gravitated to. It was just writing. You know, I was very a creative writer. Like, I sucked at grammar, but I could write the shit out of some fucking stories. You know, it just it didn't make sense with the words that I use sometimes. But yeah, man, I started writing poems, and then like my homies like that shit, and they're like, hey, write something for my girl. So then it was like a little side business, just writing poetry for them to get chicks. And then from there, it just started turning to my metamorphosing into like battle rap, and then just rapping in general. And all my homies had studios or were DJs, and it was like, I'd go to house parties. And on the east side, like once they know you have a skill or a talent, they want you to go do it at the party. So I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to come by and be the MC. You know, you got a DJ. And they're like, oh, can you do like a, a birthday song? I was like, I'll do a birthday rap. So I would do like the 50 Cent, go shawty, it's your birthday. And then I would do a freestyle and I'd use their name and I'd use the place and I'd just input stuff. It became like a, a party trick sometimes where I would just have a bunch of stuff on the table somewhere and I would just pick up the item and start rapping. And that was like practice for us. You know, because like, oh, like I said, all my homies were DJs. My homies would like leave their turntables and stuff. So like it was nonstop music was in my life. So I thought this is what I want to do. But then fast forward and then it's like in the music industry, you really got to know people. Like it, you have to know somebody to get in the studio. You got Unless you're doing your own studio time. But back then I was too broke. I couldn't just buy stuff. So here I am like, this, <laughs> I shit you not, my first big homie who was a, a producer was a tweaker. He would chase, yeah, he would chase the dragon, <laughs> you know, burn on the fucking foil and chase that shit with a straw. And it was uh, DJ Kool-Aid. 
Shout out to DJ Kool Aid, man. <laughs> I remember one time I saw him on a flyer. It was a a DUI class. He like did something with the drunk driving and shit. But yeah, man, that fool would always let us do like our little hip hop stuff. We make mixtapes. Me and my cousin Rudy. My cousin Rudy was older. He's like four years older than me. So he really put me up on game as far as like the hip hop scene and stuff. How many mixtapes did you put out? Is Bro. There, so can someone find a mixtape or do you keep it and you post it? Like <laughs> low key, we had so many mixtapes, but. When my cousin was with this chick, fucking Sarah, dude, they all were there. Like, they were all at her house. And then when they broke up, like, we literally tried to think of a way we could break in and steal back the tapes. So there are tapes out there. And, I mean, there's a lot of tapes of, like, shitty-ass raps. <laughs> they, they exist. What's sad, though, is when I hear people use my rhymes. And, like, that was a shitty rhyme that I knew I wrote. <laughs> I was going to ask you, um, do you have a line that you're proud of? Uh... What line would I always go to, man? Uh, shit. Back in the day, it was all about. Um, did you write a lot? Did you did you try to like? Uh, were you more of a lyricist, or were you like trap music? Or I was a lyricist because Nas was all love songs, all Nas, baby girl songs. Nas was my favorite rapper, so I was lyrical, you know. And it wasn't just one rap or something. I'd say it would be like concepts. It'd be like you know, like for example, how uh, Nas did the 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 car uh, the the gun when he mm -hmm. shoots and he talks about how that goes and he goes into the whole backwards way yeah of it. yeah yeah that's dope that, that was the kind of shit song. that like intrigued me you know so i would try to like bite that shit but do it about like going to the swap meet <laughs> and making something stupid and just kind of break it down and really you way. could do that with any rap song yeah and you just do it backwards because it rhymes anyways yeah yeah it's just it's just another form of expression and that's really what it was all about you know it's just me expressing myself because i had so much to say but no one to fucking listen, so I'd write it down or I'd spit it in a fucking rhyme and get recorded. But when it came to the battle rap, it was more like me finding my identity because it was just machismo shit, you know, like mano a mano. And the first rap battle contest was in Chico that I entered. And uh, it was like fucking a thousand white dudes and like three black guys. Yeah, and I made the, what is it, the quarterfinals? Mm. Yeah, I made the quarterfinals, so I made it through like a few rounds. There's a white dude, and I shit you not, he had a, a Buffalo Bills jersey and a Padres hat. So I just went off on him, and like the boy, I love losing Super Bowls, and you know, he represents losers. And, <laughs> and it was just fun, man. Like, I didn't even know nobody, and I didn't realize like you had to bring a crowd to win those type of things. So for me to even advance that far, like, I knew it was pretty dope because I didn't know anyone in that industry in that scene back then. Is the struggle to be a, an MC? Similar to the struggle of being a, a stand-up comic? Absolutely. What, what are some of those um, similarities? So, um, for one, finding your voice. Finding, True. you know, yeah. who you are. That was the first thing for the first year I really wanted to focus on as a comedian. Because transitioning from hip-hop, you know, stage presence wasn't the problem. I could always go on stage and I felt comfortable. You grab your dick. You've been you've been doing yeah, that for a while. Exactly. So I make myself at home on stage. But to transition the rap funny to com comedic funny and timing, that's where I was really working on it. Because I was just a storyteller at first. I would just go up there and ramble and then have a punchline at the end. I didn't know what the yeah. fuck a tag was. I didn't know how to like, you know, a premise. I would just go. But then it was like the similarity was really like um, finding my voice, finding who I am and a better way to like channel that, you know, and my presence would just when in doubt, I could just fall back on entertaining. Like I may not even be funny sometimes mm -hmm. in the beginning, but I could just entertain you and you would be like walking away thinking, damn, that dude was freaking funny, even though I didn't say anything really funny, but I was just talking about funny topics, you know. So that was really the similarities really came in. And, man, it was just like a. It was just like coming to Jesus when I realized, like, how to formulate jokes. You know, it's like the whole world opened up. Like, it felt like I could put any topic or any situation in this meat grinder of making jokes, and it would come out like ground beef, you know, perfectly ground joke right there. Yeah. Where do you see comedy going for you? Because, you, you know, you just recently started um, kind of pushing forward full time with it. Um in the next year, do you have any plans as far as um, chipping on shows out of town, starting your own YouTube channel, your own TikTok? Yeah, I definitely want to. This year, I'm really focusing more on my social presence. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I don't have a YouTube as of yet, but I do have a TikTok. 
So the TikTok's really showing me a little bit of how that goes. But the YouTube will allow me to um, do different things, I think, too. So I definitely want to do that and like kind of build like a portfolio of like all my good stuff so yeah. I can so I can start shopping myself to booking agents, talent agents. But I don't really want to go like commercial and just like get a fucking uh, uh, an agency. I don't think I'm worth that yet, but I want to learn the ins and outs myself. Like eventually I'll pass it on to somebody to handle the business side, but I want to know the ins and outs of it first. Yeah. You know, and then as far as touring, that's like the goal. Like I hear that uh, one of the podcasts when Tom Segura was on and he was talking about how like this was the busiest year he did and he did 185 dates out of 365 days a year. And I'm just thinking like, man, that's that to me. Some people may think that's horrible, but to me, that's like a dream come true. You know, I got a 20 year old daughter, so I don't have to be home all the time. I'm not tied down to a relationship so I can really fully in, in, indulge into this whole comedy scene. And that's where I'm at now is I just want to push to where I can start being a regular touring comic. I see these guys with posting their tour dates and everything. And that's like, that's ambitious right there for me. You know, and that's goals that I, I like seeing guys doing that because it lets me know that it's possible. And I got a good buddy of mine in L.A., Rene Vaca, who's a great up and coming comic. Mm -hmm. He's got thousands, millions of views on his TikTok. And I don't even know he's got a YouTube or not. So that lets me know like where things are at kind of in a sense. Like YouTube used to be huge. But I know there's still a platform that needs to be addressed, too. But I see people using this TikTok. Like, how many comics you see in comedy clubs that are just TikTok guys learning to be comics? It's crazy. I think I've seen uh, kind of both sides of it. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of the older people incorporate it and get more and more. Bobby Lee's one of the most, like, I could say, everybody loved the dude. Who doesn't know who the motherfucker was? But I wouldn't tell you that I knew what he was up to at any time. But once he started doing the podcast and, you know, I just was like, yeah. oh, consuming it and consuming it. And then and, and I'm not going to lie. If that motherfucker jumps on another podcast, I'll fucking watch that shit, too. Yeah, I, I, I fucking I have my podcast. That I like to watch. And I learn a little bit about them. But I definitely uh, Bob Lee's one of those people who who had he not tried to get a social media presence. I don't know where the fuck that fool be at. I mean, he talks about how he was struggling, bro. That like he was just kind of accepting that he was not gonna be well off as a comic, and yeah. you know, wasn't liked. He was all depressed and shit. And now, like, fools on top of the world. They're talking about he's banking, bro. He's banking money like a motherfucker, just doing his shit. And he's doing what he always did. He's not doing nothing different. He's not trying to be more. If anything, he's trying to bring it down a little bit. Yeah, you just see you open up more doors when those new avenues in the social media platforms. By and, far. And I have seen the the side that you're talking about of, of people um, marketing their TikToks uh, about their comedy and, and getting those bits in there. And those are nice because they're nice and edited, right? It's just your, your five seconds of, mm -hmm. of attention and your 15, 20 seconds, maybe a minute of your attention. Um, it, it, that's cool. But give that fucker 15 minutes and see how many ums and, and dead air there is, you know, but, yeah. um, yeah. and they get better. Everybody gets better if you keep trying, you know, that's all it really is. So I think some people just have a distinct sense of humor, mm -hmm. um, that is only funny to certain people where it's like, it's, it's really funny, but there's definitely those people who like, you're like, what, like, what the fuck? I've been in comedy clubs and the dude that's had like million of followers and shit and he just fucking sucked. And I get he can bring people in the door because you know the whole process of bringing your shows and all that stuff, which I get. There's that side. But I think you really should dedicate yourself to being a comedian, not just like a figure. You know, you can, a figure, being a figure or a persona is only going to carry you so far. But you got to really put in that work and time. And I see people doing it. I see a lot of guys that are just, you know, comedics on TikToks, but then they actually put in that work. I, I never thought Jamie Kennedy was a stand-up comedian. Like, really? Yeah, like when I was, like, you know, he was a movie guy. Mm -hmm. And then one, it was like one day, it's like, oh, yeah, he's doing stand-up comedy, which kind of made sense. But then when I saw him perform, like, it's a different type of comedy. Like, he's really an entertainer. You know, yeah, you can go up there and tell jokes, but you can Just also. high energy or what? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. interaction with the crowd. It was a totally different style, but it, it was hitting. And I just saw, like, okay, there's different ways of doing this, you know? You don't just have to just be the the dry humor or this and that. There's so many different variations of comedy, and that's where the beautiful thing is about, like, I can create this new thing 
And it doesn't have to just be pigeonholed to like one category. Like there's so many different areas I could hit. Where do you, here, I think I got a better call. I was gonna ask you where you like get your inspiration from, but um, yeah, let's start with that. Yeah, yeah, where do you get your inspiration for your comedy? Inspiration for my comedy would be, um, well, growing up in Living Color. That's mm-hmm. where it all started. That's where, like, I would beg my mom to let me stay up, you know. I think it was, like, 9 is when it op- when it started. So 8 o'clock was my bedtime when I was little. But I just loved staying to, like, 10, 1030, I think, how long the show went. And it was just, like, an eye-opener for me. When I saw Jim Carrey doing fucking Fire Marshal Bill, Vera DeMilo, you know, praise the Lord, the pot's been lifted. Like, all these different characters. I didn't know about Saturday Night Live right then. I didn't know about... um. Uh, Johnny Carson Tonight Show like that wasn't prevalent to my world but seeing Damon Wayans and Keenan Ivory Wayans and all these guys Handyman like all these characters they just it showed me what comedy is in my eyes you know and all these like personas and these big freaking people energies coming through the, the fucking TV I would reenact these guys I would I can impressionate literally almost every character on that damn show uh wanda i used to do that shit to the fools and they get mad i'm like hi how you doing oh my goodness and fools be like stop that shit fool i'd be like at a house party doing that shit just fucking with guys oh man what um what um i had this next question i know so where you where you get your inspiration from and then also uh do you do research when it comes to your comedy like whether it be the subject or uh, a style of comedy maybe even like writing i buy i buy uh um comedy books mm-hmm. and i'll skim them and i'll and i'll see kind of like the concept of of trying to come up with ideas you know one of my favorites is like word association so mm-hmm. if you have a joke already and then you just kind of want to fluff it or or extend it to like you know you know those three parts or something however right. you want to do your little formulas that people try to give you and shit i think like threes are what people like um but anyways um you can do that you can just kind of um Oh fuck! I had a brain fart. Fool. Was I talking? What was I saying? Yeah, as um, developing your style and oh, yeah. So like, do you, do you do what kind of um, what kind of research have you done? As far as research goes, um, I watch a lot of interviews when they talk about like how they started or their train of thought when they do it. As far as reading books, I'm not a heavy reader, bro. I'm mm-hmm. really not. I've I've tried to read stuff, but you know, really, it's just a uh, uh, trial by error is more so me than anything. And I kind of like coming in fresh, not knowing everything. Like when I found out what a tag was, or like a you know like a little pre joke before the main punchline, little little tidbit jokes is what I was calling them at the time. I didn't know what a tag was, but now I like I analyze comedian stand up. So like when I watch stand up now, like I'm breaking it down like film, like it's film class, you know. So that's where I really learn. Like okay, like Andrew Schultz for example, I call him like the king of tags. He gets it to a point where you don't even know where the main punchline is. There's all these jokes filtered in, and it's like, pick one. I got so many for you that you think is the main joke. There really isn't a main joke in a lot of his stuff. It's just like this whole huge bit of roaring and laughter up. I saw his last special. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about buying it, and I was like, you know what? It's going to have to go out at some point somewhere. So I didn't buy it, and then it came out on YouTube for free. Mm-hmm. So I watched it. Glad I didn't buy it. I mean, it wasn't bad. I was, I'm not saying it wasn't funny. I'm just saying the the marketing for it yeah. was fucking way like high expectation for what I ended up seeing. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what they're supposed to do. The, oh, yeah. The that's good, their job. Only like, the good now bits. now I'm like, fuck <laughs> this guy. I'm definitely never buying any of his shit. Like, I, now I know not to buy his shit. And I can just wait and see what happens here. Wait for it to be on Netflix like five years later. Yeah, I still haven't seen. Um, who did a who? Cat Williams did a, a a special. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. He he put it on like it was like, I think it was like a all black kind of um, like Showtime or something. It was mm. it was like their own like channel network or something. But I know it was like geared towards the like, black community because I remember that was some of the statements that he was saying that he wanted his community to see it first. Mm. or have it first or have access to it first and then he would put it out to everybody couldn't tell you what the name of it is anymore i forgot already and couldn't tell you if it was good i haven't never seen it i haven't even heard anybody talk about it 
Yeah. I will say the thing that I liked about Andrew was a different style of um, uh, putting it out, where it was pay-per-view based, how he did it like that. I mean, it does take away from the Netflix and the Amazon stranglehold. I'm sorry, but there's so many uh, op- uh, specials now on all these different platforms. Like, you can't keep up. But the way he did it where it's separate from everything, it kind of added a little extra buzz to it. So I think that really helped as far as getting that movement and those numbers up for him. Have you pulled uh, jokes or, or, again, trying to build your, your comedy? You said you've watched, you know, you, you recall the shows you watched growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you mentioned the, the second part. So have you ever looked out outside of comedy to try to um, I'll give you an example. So um, there was a time when I was doing shows with Lil G and every once in a while, you know, I try to pick his brain about a joke or or he tell me my joke suck or something like you mm-hmm. know it's just something like just to like get like work on this part or something mm-hmm. or like or sometimes he would tell me like about doing research and so um sometimes we'd be just hanging out talking about you know either trying to get to a gig you know are we going to go to the, on a plane are we going to do this are we going to go by train the amtrak greyhound whatever trying to figure out the numbers um the dates my schedule and then you know we're just doing everything but we would have like youtube going in the background and so one day we we're talking about a certain joke and he's like, you, you ever try to be like more and more animated, you know, like to really there's more to the joke than just the lines and the timing. You know, there's there's also your your body language. Uh, and I'm, you know, what's the word? Um, not parentheseing his uh, I'm, I'm shortening what he said. Right. Emphasizing. Uh, yeah. Emphasizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, and so he um, he talked about that. And so I was just like, all right. Yeah, yeah. I can see what you're saying. He's like, well, let me show you a couple of comedians, you know. So he he put on YouTube a couple of comedians. He's like, watch them, and so I remember, and I can't remember the guy's name, bro, but he was this this um, this kind of like lanky comedian, kind of um, really tall. Um, but he starts telling his joke about about eating pussy. But the way he's talking about eating pussy is he's comparing it to a cat playing with its prey, you know. <laughs> so. He he starts out with he's like telling these other random jokes right and then he leads up to that and then he he starts like walking like a cat like stalking and working its way up and then there's like a chair and the the top of the chair is kind of what he's saying is the prey or the mm-hmm, pussy right mm-hmm. and so he he works his way up and then he gets to it and he goes pop 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 but the way he did it when you know when it's over and then G was like G was like okay what what did, what did you see here you know what did you see and I was like well he told a joke about eating pussy and he compared it to this and he's like but what did you think about it and he was like. I was like, that motherfucker looked like a cat. Like when he was acting like a cat, I was yeah. like, motherfucker looked like a cat. Yeah. You know, he didn't look. He didn't have no looks, you know, whiskers and shit. No, he was the way he was moving his body, and he looked over to to like the camera and mm-hmm. the angle, and then he just waited, and he's just the personality of a cat. Like, and he goes, "You think he just did that shit? That motherfucker sat there and watched his cat for a minute, bro, mm-hmm. and thought about that shit, and so he's a." Think about that and put it into your comedy. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and we would do that with like different stuff. So if I had like a random questions about like uh, different styles of, you know, like call like a callback or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Or, or if I had like, talk, like, you know, I've noticed people do this and he would, um, one thing, one thing that I, I, after I, he started, I wasn't like, I was always like, you know, learning stuff from him, but I definitely was always picking his brain about certain stuff. Um, one one of the things, oh fuck, I'm, I'm I'm so excited to say that I fucking spaced out what I was trying to say. Um. Oh, another thing. So, when we would do these shows, right? Obviously, he has like a higher notoriety, right? So these are like a little bit more known comics, or I'm, and so I'm seeing people that I used to see on Comic View and shit, just fucking in the green room, just like who the fuck are you. You know, kind of not, not nobody's ever nobody was ever rude to me, mm-hmm. but every oh, people always kind of like give you like side eye and be like, who who the, who the fuck is this guy? You know, and then I just be doing my thing, and then all of a sudden they'd be like, oh, he's with G, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, hey, what's up? What's your name? I'm like Iceberg. I'm like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. You with G? Yeah, all right, yeah. Where's he at? I, was like, I think he went out to the back. He's talking to somebody. He's like, all right, cool. Tell him I say hi. And I'm Melanie. Or I'm blah blah blah. Or I'm so and so. Like, okay, nice to meet you. Um, but I knew who the fuck they were, bro. And yeah. I was like, fucking like, oh, on the fuck. inside. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck. Try not to be a fanboy. Yeah. She's cool with me. Uh, he's cool. With that me. is the hardest thing. 
Uh, one of my Fuck. one of my one of my proudest <laughs> ones, which uh, you know, people are such fucking assholes sometimes. They can try to pump you up about shit. So who knows if they're true and shit, you mm-hmm. know? Um, especially when you're having a good time, people say random shit. So one time, me and G, we had a show in Vegas, and we fucking, I think it was like last minute, we found like tickets for like ninety bucks round trip. So we fucking we jump, bro. We jump uh in Burbank. We go to Vegas. We go to do a show, and um. Before the show, we go to one of his friends' uh, 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 businesses. He has, like, a clothing store where, like, if you have a brand, you just send him your clothes and he'll sell it. And then um, they work out the proportions or whatever, right? And so we go to check out the store, and it's uh, Red Grant, um, whom, you know, I've seen on Comic View all the time. is like, fucking iconic Gap. And, yeah. You know, like, the... the, the you yeah, know, all that yeah. Shit. You know, like I remember this guy. Fool, my favorite, my favorite joke of his was uh, the the one that was on Cat Williams' uh, special when mm. it's him and I think it's, is it Melanie Camacho or something. But they they um they they um he's telling his joke and he he pinches the sheets with his butt cheeks. Yeah, and he, <laughs> and he fucking walks and shit. Uh, oh, fool! I remember that shit was so fucking goofy. But anyways, I walk in and that fool is not going. <laughs> You know, like he he's 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 on uh he's on his TV talking to Snoop Dogg like, "Hey, mom, I'm gonna beat you, blah blah." You know, talking <laughs> back and forth to each other. Like, oh, what was that? This is and that. And then he's like, "Hey, what's up, man?" He's like, he's like, uh, he's like, "Look, he's like, oh, this is iceberg, blah blah. This is red, blah blah." And I'm listening to Snoop Dogg play this fool and shit. I'm like, "This is fucking, fucking nuts, man! Like, where the fuck am I, bro? Like, this is fucking crazy." And then all of a sudden, like, Red's just like. Take a seat, you know, telling me to be comfortable in his place. And I'm just like, this is fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> but I'm just going to play it cool. And he's like, hey, man, you don't have to stay in the front. You just want to go in the back. You just go in the back and chill. I was like, am I that ugly or some shit? <laughs> 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 fucking up my business. We'll get the fuck in the back. <laughs> and so, like, uh, I go to the back and there's, there's this dude already looks cool for Like, he's just chilling in the back. He got gold and fucking crazy gold shades and mm-hmm. shit. And he's just minding his own business and shit. He's just, like, doing something. I go back there and obviously I know he's somebody who doesn't want to, my, he, I don't need to waste his time. Right. He's, he's on his phone. He's doing shit. He's making calls and shit. So I'm like, I'm not going to be over here trying to chit chat with some food. Right. And so I just sit there, I'm chilling. I'm on my phone. I'm thinking about the show, what jokes I'm going to do if, if, if my timing is right. And then, um, the dude didn't really say anything to me, you know, like he was just chilling. And then I think, um, this girl walked by, he told her what to do. And then she said something, and then we all got into, like, a conversation about what was going on. She was, like, cleaning, and she didn't want to clean. He was talking talking shit, and we all started, like, bagging on her and shit. We just bullshitted for a little bit. And then, um, fucking excused myself, and I left. I went to went for a walk and shit. And then um, when I came back, Luigi was like, hey, that fool said, that fool said he liked you, man. He said you're a cool dude. I was like, <laughs> it was just a short, it was just, like, a short, you know, like, you know, bullshit and shit. And then, yeah. like, that fool was like, he said you're cool, bro. He's like, I was like. I didn't really do anything, you know. I just said fucking, just minding my own business. And he's like, "Yeah, he liked that shit. He liked that you weren't in there trying to put a fucking CD in his face and yeah. shit." You know, you were yeah. just fucking bagging on the girl, just chilling, mind your own business. You weren't fucking trying to sell yourself, trying to fucking dick ride and shit. You know? Yeah. He's like, "People don't like that shit, man." Nah. And I was like, "All right, that's cool." Like, I'm mostly just shy, you know. <laughs> I say like ninety percent <laughs> of it is just like, <laughs> like I don't, I don't, I don't like bothering people when they look busy and shit. Because even if I'm bored, I'm not gonna like fucking take your time. Cause Interject I'm bored. and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, I went on a tangent. Um, yeah. I forgot what the point of it was. It was just meeting your idols, uh, and then also yeah. um, there was something to it, but I forgot what the fuck. Yeah, was. like uh, when uh, like fanboying out, man. That's like the hardest thing not to do because like I have so much fucking as- admiration for these people, and I idolize some of the stuff that they do. And they're like in our heads, they're huge, you know. So then you're sitting in the green with them, and you're just like that awkward moment. Like, should I say something? And your inner side's like, don't say shit. Just be fucking cool. Just be fucking cool, you know? And then they talk to you like, oh my God, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. <laughs> and I just like, I don't know. I just, for me, I'm always going to be myself. You know, whether you like it or not, that's on you. So I'm never going to be something I'm not. But usually when I start talking to people, like real recognize it's real, you know? And that's what I really take from like my interactions with all these big guys. They're, they're just regular people, you know? Yeah. They, they started somewhere too. You know, and there may be a day one time where I walk in a room and somebody's going to fucking lose their shit. And you know what? Low key, that'll be kind of dope. <laughs> yeah, no, I think a lot of them are pretty humble. I, I think people get the reputation that uh, like comics are all fucked up or like people who with money or people who came up are all dicks and shit. I would say 
there there are some people who who just kind of bitter and shit, and they're like, you know, you can't deal with them. But for the most part, everybody's trying to have a good time, trying to hang out. Yeah, that's what everybody got their own little their own little clicks and things that they enjoy. Um, one of the, I was going to talk to you about getting inspiration. So one, um, I do sometimes consult with other comedians, right? They kind of give you tips. Um, and so one of the observations, I think I was kind of where I went on tangent too. One of the observations that I made when I was going to these shows was that a lot of the, a lot of the black comedians would do a sound. And so, and that could be kind of skewed because I was doing mostly comedy, black comedy shows, but, but one thing I noticed about all the comics was that they were all doing like a bit where somehow there was a sound repeating, right? Mm -hmm, Whether mm -hmm. it be like, something bumping into something, something getting smacked, like some type of action sound mm -hmm. that, that, that just kind of, when it repeats itself, gets its own little flow. Yes. And, 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 and people like almost, you don't even have to tell a joke anymore. If you just make that sound, they're dying, they're dying, bro. You're exactly right. And you know, what? I have a bit just like that. Um, it's the smoke alarm bit that I do. And it talks about how, like, one of my biggest uh, bits is my Toxica bit. And it goes into so many different avenues. Like, I can interchange it in all these different ways or different formats that I use. But one part I do do is the, the, the fire alarm. How when you go to a chick's house or you're on a, um, a Zoom call and you got these toxic people that can just block out the sound of the chirp. And we've all seen it. Like, you're talking to somebody. You got to go to somebody's house and you just hear this chirp, chirp. And when I start doing that, by the third time, the fucking crowd is dying. Like, I'm not even saying anything. I'm just doing the chirp. Yeah, you're right. It's crazy. Yeah, people people just, um, it's just one of those things that you learn. I, I, don't, I couldn't tell you the science behind it or what the fuck. You know, it's just something that I've observed. It's like the callback. You know, it's just something yeah. that you observe that when, you, when, when this thing happens, it just brings something out of, like, oh, like the, the callback. The callback is a classic of, like, Oh, you know, like they, it just adds on to what you've heard before mm -hmm. and stuff. It's just, yeah. What's crazy is like I haven't done a lot of research as far as that goes, but people have told me like some of my sets and stuff have a lot of that already attributed, and it's just naturally formed. But I mean, it's just it's part of creation, you know. And you can tell maybe it's just from my experience of seeing people perform. Like I just attributed what they and you know kind of metamorphosed into my own style. But yeah, man, there's all these different techniques that I don't even know half of them. But then my home like, did you know you did this? You know, and I'm like, no, I have no fucking idea. But I knew that fucking worked and it made yeah. sense. You know, so that's cool. One thing I learned, too, was about the different crowds. Uh, you know, as much as people don't want to be segregated, there's definitely a segregation in comedy where, you know, there's clubs yeah. that are like multiracial. There's clubs that are, you know, known for black comics, you know, and so. Or heavy white Trump or supporters, just straight up white, you know, just because of like the state or the city, you know, just straight up white, white redneck stuff or whatever the situation may be. But um, one thing I learned is that the 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 rhythm that you have is different, you know, in, in like a multicultural kind of situation. I think it's more just um, slow is okay, steady, you know, kind of these um, even some of the racial jokes are okay. But when you go to a black comedy place black comedy club you're you're it's faster bro if you tell you sit there and try to tell a story no like no that there has to be like tags and mm -hmm. and 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 a punchline probably like every second every 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 sentence you know just boom 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 boom. smaller boom. attention span there's something too. if you're not if you're, if the joke isn't a, the the words you're saying, the joke is the fucking face you're making, or the fucking expression that you're making, or the sound that you're making. Like, it, it, you're you're hitting them with something. Yeah. There's no build up to a joke, or it's rare. I would say it's more rare. I, I always tell my buddies that are up and coming, like the first thing that I wanted to do that I learned was, when you get on stage, you got to earn their trust quickly, because it don't take long for them to say, all right, I'm not even fucking involved. They do another shit. So that first part, when you get going, you really got to win the crowd over. It's it's that trusting. It's just like when you're telling, like, um, uh, you're giving a speech or something. You just want to set the premise and get going. But you can't, like you said, you can't wait around for it. You, it's got to be pretty rapid. And then you can kind of slow down a little bit, but it's got to have, like, highs and lows, though, too. I like it, like, when I think of my buddies when they would rap, and they'd have, like, a monotone voice, and it all sounds the same. Like, I can't stand that shit. 
But like you said, you accent certain words, you get more animated. Then it adds more to it. Cut the fat. Yeah, and that's really like you said. When those live crowds, I'm trying to be as animated as possible. I'm all over the damn place. You know, even on my uh, one of my toxic p- parts of my bit, I do this stabbing of the flat screen TV. I do like <laughs> I jump down and I'm like the girl on top of me. Who the fuck is Sarah? Like all these uh, movements that I do, it really brings the crowd to fucking erupt, man. Yeah. Um, a lot of the why I did the books was because of those conversations with with G, and where I was kind of like, um, there's shortcuts in this shit. Not not shortcuts to success, I would say, but definitely shortcuts in, um, finding out your voice. Like not not just your voice of like the style of comedy you want. But your voice and how you write your jokes and mm-hmm. you know the, how how you how you jump on a topic, um, that that really got my my mind going about it. And so I was like, well, I like reading, so let me find a book, right? So I fucking bought like I bought one book by I think it was Pete Garrett or Jarrett, I can't remember right here, but um, uh, he he had this thing where he like you if you had a joke, and let's say your punchline was you know, brick to the face or some shit, you know, then he would want you to write down like brick and then just like everything you associate with the word brick, you know, yes. so red, chalky, dry, solid, you know, just write all that shit. And then in doing that, you're not going to write a joke. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But, but you're, 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 what's going to happen is that it'll connect a dot to another joke or you can like have another joke where you're just like, you know, I'm just going to, you know, change the name or change the like you know and just kind of bring it into this other joke yeah yeah um definitely definitely helps with that um and also if you just want to make some shit up and just like oh yeah you know it would be fucking funny if like this you know whatever the, the situation may be but i went so far on some of the not just the writing part and I, by no means am i like the greatest fucking comedian writing here right mm-hmm. but i i do I do write my jokes and I'm not full time. Like I, I haven't done comedy in, I want to say like three years mm-hmm. and I've done shows. Um, I've traveled and done shows, but I haven't like sat at a comedy club and go, I think this is funny and bomb. And then go, well, fuck them. You know, I'm going to fix it. So you listen to the audio and go like, okay, Okay, yeah, I can see where I lost them here. It was mm-hmm. too fat, you know. That wasn't even necessary. I don't know why the fuck I even said that part. Like I'm gonna start taking yep. that, I'm gonna yep. take that part out. And then even when you go up to say it the next time you get to that point and you're like, Okay, I remember that part it sucked, I'm gonna jump to the next part. But so that was writing. I started getting into um trying to be more animated. So I would look up that comedian. Um but I can't remember his fucking name right now. It's like Johnson. I can't remember something Johnson. But anyways, um when it got to to being animated, I started thinking a little bit out the box, and I was like, "Who's animated? Like, who's animated? Who talks without words?" Right? I had a I, one day I, was, I I told a joke when I was in, I was doing the comedy show. I'm gonna rant a little bit. I was doing a joke when I was doing a pussy pussy juice sound when I was fingering this girl, <laughs> and I just did that. And I was trying to trying to come up with the set doing the sounds right. So I was trying to do that. What I was telling you, I'm trying to find a joke where I could make that sound uh, the bit. Um, and so I was like, um. How long could I do that? You know, kind of like what's his name, um, the Andy Kaufman. Oh, okay. Who just do random shit. You know, read a book. Mm-hmm. Just read a book and see how long people would stay in the crowd and listen to that shit. And so I was like, how long could I finger bang? You know, or finger <laughs> fuck the stool. So how long can I finger fuck the stool before like either I get the light or. Or people just start like it's not funny, you know. Mm-hmm. Or, or or will it be funny? You know, who knows? It's funny to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll do the sounds a little bit different. I'll do different angles and change the sounds. Whatever, you know. I was just trying to come up with that shit. And so I was like thinking, how how funny can I make it without saying any words? Gotcha. So then I started thinking like, who's animated and don't use words? Fucking mimes, bro. So I started watching mimes, and I it wasn't really what I was looking for. I was like, ah, it's like that's like you know, rope in the box and shit. I was like, ah, I'm not. Okay, like, um, watched a couple of it. I was like, nah, it still isn't what I'm looking for. But there, it's, it's, I'm getting there. And so then I looked up this guy. Uh, I started looking at clowns, right? So I, in my search, I started going into, like, the history of clowns. Oh, shit. You know, and so, like, then going back into, like, the fucking. Fools. All that shit, right? And it's going yeah, back, gestures. back about all that shit and, like, stand-up comedy. And then it goes into, like, it becomes stand-up comedy, blah, blah. But anyways, 
I run into um, the this guy. He's a Russian clown. His name is um, Slav. Oh fuck! I'm, I'm so bad with names. Something Slav. But he 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 fucking his whole thing is miming. But he's dressed as a clown and he does shit with like coats and music and like the breeze of like the snow coming in. He puts on, but it's all, all facial expressions, but there's no fucking words, but you can Benny watch Hill. that shit. You can watch that shit and yeah. just be like, oh my God. So I was like, I'd watch him, but I watch all his YouTube shit. I listen to him talk. And when you listen to talk to him, I thought he was going to be a fool, bro. This guy was like kickback, philosophical, fucking just chilling. He has this like property where he lets like. He lets his mind go, bro. If you go to his property, like, there's a fucking balloon tower and shit, you know? Like, yeah. just weird shit. He's, like, an artist as well, I guess. What was it? Bean? Bean was another one that wouldn't talk. Right. And his animated animations was just ridiculous. That took it from Benny Hill. He was saying yeah. stuff without no Same. words. No words. Yeah. Your action by your movements. Yeah, yeah. That's the beautiful thing about comedy. There's so many different variations of it. And you can... Add a little uh, and attribute a little bit to your sh- you know, your set here and there. You can add. There's so many things you could do with comedy, and that's the thing I like about it. It really is art because you. It's like a blank canvas that you're creating, you know, and you're putting all this stuff on there and just seeing what sticks. Sometimes you're just throwing shit on the wall, see if it sticks. Yeah, man. It looks like shit, just whatever. <laughs> sell it to somebody. For five yeah, bucks. somebody sell, will, sell it to someone for five bucks. Or shit. Somebody will like it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dog. <laughs> um. Fuck. Uh yeah, yeah I'm down for anything. I mean, you want to talk, you want to talk uh, current events. You want to talk about the the Iranian shit going on. Oh, so, so I was talking to Julian about Russia, right? Okay. And I was telling you that I didn't know if I came off as like, why don't you know about your national policy? You know, but it was more of like, it's for me, it was more of like uh, I think I told you like, I don't see any wrong anything wrong with it. Like if you're not interested, you don't care. It kind of makes me feel like, okay, you're going to suffer whatever consequences. Like, it doesn't mean something's going to happen to you. But, like, don't be mad if something you could have been involved to say something about, you know. Yeah. No, you're not much you can do about Russia. But, anyways, I, I thought it was an interesting topic to talk about. Um, but I also thought it was kind of cool. Like, yeah, man, if someone doesn't give a fuck, they could just not give a fuck, fool. That's how awesome. Like, like it's handled, bro. It's handled. Like, yeah. Like, what do I care about Russia? I'm not going to do nothing. If he starts some shit, you know, my my primo in the Marines, he's going to take care of it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I was telling him that I, I enjoy politics, but I don't necessarily enjoy it as in like, oh, I'm a Republican and, um, you know, I have these ideologies and shit. I more enjoy it of like, I have a perception of how to solve certain problems and I agree with a certain fucking group about certain things. Mm. But where I get a kick out of it in politics is trying to predict what's going to happen. Being like, oh, these motherfuckers are up to something. And trying to be like, oh, I knew it. They were going to do that. And so I was telling him, like, my biggest thing about Russia isn't like, fuck Putin for invading Ukraine and these, you know, this sovereign nation, all this. Nah, for my shit is like, you dumb fuck. We've put this fucking illusion of you being the grand old fucking Russian bear fucking killer. And we got to invest in the military and we got to fucking have this and that because we don't fucking know <coughs> the Cold War never fucking ended. You know, all that shit. And this fool went in there and made a fucking fool of himself. And so now the smokes and mirrors are gone. So like, what do we do? No one's scared of him anymore other than the nukes. So what do we do? So now we are, are, are really our only enemy that we like. We could say like, and I like, is that smoke and mirrors too? China, bro. Are they really that tough? I think they are. I think I think China is more advanced as far as technology wise than Russia because I think Russia. But is that a part of the illusion that we're taught so that we think like that? But if you were really someone who was like in their in their Chinese military or someone who like you know They're like our you, planes are trash, you know, <laughs> yeah. Trying to explain to Putin like, bro, I, I know it's, I know it's Ukraine and I know it's a little thing, but like, I don't think you can do it. You think people are gonna support the cause if they think they're trash? And we're just going to go out there and mop them up? Of course not. Like no. Iraq, for example. It's, it's like we it's, knew we were going to destroy them. But I think these big powers, it, it makes people want to join the military. It makes people want to spend more money and get involved because they create this big bad. And I think throughout history, they've always created the big bad. You go back all the ways to like the the Roman days. The Persians were the big bad. 18, the, the Polak, you know, invading fucking Mexico and shit, you know, starting the Bravo, the fucking, the fight at the Rio and shit. I've always been fascinated with um, history. I was a history buff. 
So I can go way back. I mean, I would watch ridiculous history, you know, documentaries on YouTube. Just what, was it something you, you saw or was it just available to you? So you just ended up liking the topic. I have a yearn for knowledge. And uh, when it comes to like history repeating itself and learning from history, that's where it came from. Like I wanted to know why we do stupid shit. And I could look back in older times and see, oh, this is why. Because we can't get over this bullshit or this perspective that we think we have. Like we're better than everybody. When really it's the wrong perspective to have in the world. You know, we really should like our comedy scene where I'm like all for the scene. The scene is the reason why we're successful. You know, the more we put into this, but other people want to be selfish. Like I'm the shit. I'm the fucking America. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a, a direct analogy to fucking in life and history and perspective you can get too. That's definitely a topic that's been reoccurring with some of the comics I've talked to because, um, you know, we can call the people the old heads and we can call the, the people who are up and coming in the last, let's say, like two, three years as the newer comics. But the more and more comics there is, the more and more drive there's going to be for people to not not be greedy, but be like, you know what? Like, we don't have an open mic on Wednesdays. Let me do an open mic on Wednesdays. And do a, oh, man, I can find a mic on Wednesdays. And then... You know, find a spot and be like, hey, everybody got fucking, I got, I found a spot, bro. Fucking just do a comedy and just go. And the only part is like, how's that community? You know, is that community going to be like, fuck yeah, you know, I, we needed a fucking Wednesday mic. I got another day to practice my shit. And there's going to be other people who are like, nah, bro, I was fucking working on a Wednesday night. Okay, you're working on a Wednesday night, but I've got us a Wednesday night. Nah, man. I was like, well, how about. I'll do mine at early. I'll do mine like people getting out of work, right? Like six, six thirty. Um, what time are you gonna do yours? You know, it's like nah, man, I got Wednesdays. <laughs> it's like like you cornered the market like it's a monopoly. Yeah, and it's like, hey, bro, actually, the best thing for us to have is two mics. That way, we can it's less. We can carpool together. Just go for one mic too. Like, I never well, understood that, bro. It's like like uh, I'm just gonna throw it out there. Um, there was a time where we were spoken to by somebody of a figure. And they're like, if you do this mic on this day, you will not be allowed to come to our mic on the same day. And it just was mind boggling to me because in L.A. and everywhere else, you try to hit as many mics as you fucking can and you have to get that work. So you're basically telling me I can't get better because you're going to stop me from my reps, getting because my reps. You in. want me to hang out somewhere where it's not my problem to fucking keep people here, bro. Like, like that's your job. Your job is to keep the audience here. I'm not taking the audience anywhere. You keep them here. You you can do another show after that. You could do a second mic, open mic, do something else. You know, put on some other entertainment. You got them in there. Keep them in there. Feed them or some shit. But instead, they're like, their 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 concepts is wrong. And one thing I'll tell you that I think uh, with the open mics, why people fight so much is that they they promote it wrong. Mm. They'll go to a business and tell a business how like all these people are gonna come in there and hang out. And it's like, no, that's not how you sell to a business. You tell mm -hmm. a business, like, hey, bro, your Wednesday nights, or, 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 you know, this is what I always told people. What's your worst night? What's your worst night? Fucking dead here, but you're open. Oh, fucking Wednesday, bro. Wednesdays from, like, 6 to 8, I don't have any customers. I get the yeah. drinkers come in at 8. Yeah. It's like, how about this? You know, we do the comedy show, sign up at 630. Everybody starts getting in here. It's going to get a little crowded. People see that it's popping a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's just the it's just the mic people. And then by the time we get the fuck out of there, you've already pulled in the what the fuck is going on over there. Right, right. You build the buzz. And, and so then we get the fuck out of there. And you got them doing you got your homie sending country music or you got someone doing, you know, karaoke or something. Do your fucking thing. You know, why? Why am I fucking traveling to spend all this money in your place and mm -hmm. shit? You know, and, and, and I don't know why they do that, because nobody fucking pays for anything. I don't, I don't think I've ever been to a mic where people were like, hey, bro, let's show this business love and buy all the fucking wings and all the fucking beer. No, people are like, let me get a water because I got to get on the fucking bus to get to the next mic. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's the that should be the concept of everybody. When I was in L.A., that's what I did. I would do four to five mics every fucking night. Yep. And it helped me so much because, I, like I told people, I wouldn't even have a set. I would go in the morning, try my whatever I was thinking about while I was at work or whatever I was talking about on my break. And then go do the joke, fucking cut the fat, what doesn't work, what might work, what can I work on, and go to the next mic. By the fucking fifth mic, I knew what did, <laughs> I knew it was not just was just not gonna work. Yeah. What what I'm I'm on to, like, oh, okay, this is like talking about my dad dead is 
people fucking like it. I thought people would get kind of sad to bring the room down, but it's like people won't stop fucking laughing. I kind of feel like an asshole. People laughing at my dad's <laughs> shit. Like, um, and then I was like, yeah. oh, okay, people, people, you know, I try to get into why why people like a joke about my dad dead, but I think of a, a lot of it is just because I'm being so chill about it. You know, I'm making light of like yeah. finding my dad dead, and I had a, I have had maybe three people kind of tell me that the reason they were laughing so hard because they would tell me like oh fuck i couldn't even i couldn't even hear what you're saying because my fucking girl was laughing or my brother was laughing or my aunt was laughing and then they go just they've lost somebody and then the the little tags that i was giving the little things even though they were to make the crowd laugh they were kind of like sentimental things that they had to because there's one joke where i was like where i was sitting there i was like i was sitting there and i was laughing and everybody was looking at me like why is this fool laughing? You know, he's weird or something, right? But I'm laughing because I'm like, damn, like, where the fuck were all you guys yesterday when I had to lift the fucker up, you know, and I couldn't do it, and I'm struggling to pick him up, and then where the fuck were all you guys? Oh, now all of a sudden you guys could be here on the fucking, on the dime and shit, and when I was saying, hey, man, I could use help whenever I can, crickets, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, like, to me, that shit was funny, bro, so I was just sitting there laughing to myself, but when I make that joke, when I go like, you know, where the fuck were you yesterday? Fucking people laugh and they go, yeah, I felt like that too, man. Like, where the fuck were you? Where the fuck were all these people when, when I was going through all this shit? But it's so different and subtle that you can just laugh about it. Yeah, the people feel it. Like, it, it, it's like part of their DNA. It almost is like it's embedded in them because like they felt something like that so they can relate. There's been countless times where somebody after the show or after a performance or open mic even... They'll be like, damn, dog, I felt like I was right there at the house party with you. Like, I, I've been to that house party before, and I'm explaining the situation that transpired. Or uh, I'll say something, he's like, I felt like I was in the cypher right there with you because I was telling, like, a, the cypher joke and shit. And it's just, like, it's so gratifying that that moment in time that you felt, that person, totally stranger, feels the same exact way. You know, whether it's something that relatable to them or just they can see themselves in that situation. I could imagine being there, you know, at that moment. And that's really what I fucking love about comedy, man. It's just like this connective tissue of all of us in some roundabout way. You know, you may think we're completely different in different backgrounds and upbringing, but this one fucking joke we can all fucking relate to. It's crazy. Do you watch any sports? I'm a huge sports fanatic. Kobe is better than Jordan. Um, fuck the Dodgers, man. They're like my fucking worst girlfriend ever. My Titans, they're like another fucking bad bitch that I can't stand, but I can't get enough of. Um, my Lakers, I mean, I'm a devoted lover fan of these teams, you know, ever since I was a kid. So it's heartbreaking, man. Like, I take that shit personal. <laughs> I'm like Jordan, I take that shit personal. When fucking last night losing to the Padres, bro, I was fucking pissed. Like, I'm on this huge high, you know, of a, throwing my show and Good Fools Entertainment going off and this great night. And then I look at my fucking ticker real quick, and I'm just like, pinch. <laughs> do you do you get more positivity since like your teams do bad sometimes, right? And I would think the more sports you enjoy, the more teams that let you down. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, for you, does the, has the sports or the teams that you liked brought you more joy than pain? Yes, yes, because the joy doesn't just come from the game the decision it's more than that the joy comes with uh the the community the people that you watch this with uh the people you talk shit with at the water you know at the water fucking cooler talk type stuff like just the camaraderie of being a part of it and in our own little perspective we have our opinions like we fucking know what we're talking about and everyone has a fucking opinion you know like what should be done and I don't know, I just think the whole the whole uh, community behind it, I think, is really what the joy is. Not so, yeah, I love when we win. I love when we score touchdowns or fucking home runs, and that's fucking great. But, like, the stories and the experiences around that, you know, that's what really makes it something that I enjoy more than anything. I just watched the Raiders. I'm sorry. I, I've always felt that it's brought me more joy than, that's rough. than, than pain. My most, the the most thing I enjoy sometimes is just fucking yelling at the TV. <laughs> like, even if it, we're losing and I'm yelling, like, it's getting out my aggressions from, like, the past week. 
Yeah. Like, I really don't have to. Which, that said, I fucking missed the game. It was at one today. God damn. Fucking idiot. I don't even know. Hopefully, we beat the fucking... Who were we playing? The Patriots? Or who do we play? Mm-hmm. Titans. We played the Titans. Yeah, we beat you guys. That you guys won? Early. That Titans was earlier this Titans week. <sighs> that was like... I think that was Monday. That was Monday. Was... And they have a game today. They played Monday and they have a game today. Well, we played you guys like two weeks ago. Yeah. That was a pregame or that was first game? No, it was... It was um. Two second, or three weeks ago, game. we beat you guys. Yeah, that was fun because all my homies are Raiders fans. My family, my grandfather. They're so like growing up, dude. Like everyone, like, when you're a kid, you get like a fucking sales pitch. Uh, my uncle would buy me a Christmas fucking sweater of Cowboys. You know, he wanted me to be, and it's a Letterman's one. So that shit was tight. Sometimes the motherfucker gets cold. I'm not a Cowboys fan, but I'm putting this shit on. You know. Uh, my Theo would buy me a pullover, you know, a fucking Niners. I didn't ever like a red color. I don't know. The red and gold just didn't look good on me. But when I put that Bombers fucking Houston Oilers with the baby powder blue, bro, I look at myself in the mirror and I was just like, damn, that's what I look like right there. And it just felt right when I was playing Tecmo Bowl and I'm the fucking Oilers, you know, and they're throwing all over fools. I remember Tecmo Bowl had an unstoppable play and certain teams had them, the very first one. So you had Chicago. To the white boy tight end, I think. Uh, the Niners had one in the middle. It was a slant. And then the Oilers had one, too. But it was this fucking roundabout, like, wheel route. And for some fucking reason, when you threw it on the wheel route, like, after 40 yards, the defender would just turn away the opposite direction. So I'd go down the sideline every time. <laughs> how how deep will your fandom go? Like, are you down to do, like, gang activity as a... No. As a, as a, a, a Kind of like the hooligans. Yeah. You down for hooligan shit? Like, okay, I think the... the I shouldn't say gang. That was a kind of extreme. All right, so, like, <laughs> you know, in in England, it's different, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they have these crews, and they That's go around and fuck yeah, fools yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, So, from that perspective, no. Nah, I don't think... Well, questions in this life. That's my NPR. My yeah, bad. Yeah, it's my all bad. good. It's all good. Fucking NPR. Yeah, so, um... Uh, from that perspective, I could never see myself throwing up the set for the fucking team. But, like, I mean, I get it when they're in the parking lots and, like, they're walking out and you just caught an L. Like, I get it. Like, these fools are talking mad shit and you don't know how to take it. But, really, that's self-discipline. Like, more so than anything, like, if I want to go into a fight, there's no reason, really. I'm wanting to fight that day. I'm wanting to fuck some. There's been shit going on throughout my life or something that brought me to this point where I need to knock this motherfucker out. <laughs> Bro, are you one of those? Like, if you beat the shit out of dude, you'd be, like, letting out aggression and shit. Like, you were hitting a pillow with the therapist and shit. Nah, I get my aggression out other ways now, but when I was a kid, yeah. Like, I tell, I told the story last night. My dad told me, um, if you see some dude in house slippers and a white tee, <laughs> he's all, fuck him up now, because later he's going to have a knife or a gun and try to kill you. Oh, shit. So walking through, like, uh, second, third, fourth grade, you know, like, as a kindergartner, my dad's telling me this shit. So all I wanted to do was knock motherfuckers out, bro. I, and the way the story goes is like my grandma went to a family reunion one time and told everybody Bobby had a gang when he was six years old. No, I did not have a gang, grandma. What I did is there was a bunch of kids that got beat up that became my friend because I could fuck up the bullies. So I was a bully buster, you know, and then I got to a point where like I just wanted to fuck a fool up. You know, that was just what I wanted to do. And it was like it was kind of like a game where like. Okay, they would jump me with like a bunch of fools later, but then I'd get this fool like at school by himself. <laughs> do you do you think uh since I mean it sounds like you're confident in, in your in your ability to defend yourself or or if you wanted to fuck someone up, you could. Do you think a lot of the why you wouldn't be a hulu, uh, <clears throat> why you wouldn't be a hooligan is because you've seen the other fans? <laughs> yeah. Like you've seen your other Titan fans and you're like, "You know what? I don't think I want to have that fool's back." Yeah. Whereas, like, me, I think I would be down for it because I'm like, well, fucking Raiders, we're all fucking dismadrosos and shit. Mm-hmm. So, like, I am I think I'd be all right if we all just threw down with the fucking Chargers or we all threw down with the fucking <laughs> Niners and shit. We would, get, we would be all right if there's enough mm-hmm. of us, you know? Mm-hmm. If the numbers are even? Yeah. yeah. I just, I think well, because of my upbringing, I got so much fighting out of my way. I got it out there. I think it was a good, like, growing up, going to boxing. You know, my neighbor was a boxing coach. So I could go in his garage and I could do work. And he'd set me up with fights with like kids older than me. So like I really got prolific at knocking fools out and wasting energy and not wasting energy and shit. So as I got older, I just kind of got tired of it because like this, this like, who am I trying to prove I am? You know what I mean? Like I like I started like going through history class, you know, learning history and stuff of myself. I start analyzing and just like 
I was a different person back then because I was like so trying to win my dad's fucking uh, appreciation. And his perspective was we went to Jefferson Park. He knocked this dude named Debo out. And all throughout my upbringing, when I go to play basketball, this fool remembers me being the son of the guy who got beat his ass. He'd call me Centennial. He's like, what's up, Centennial? And like I'd see him all the time at Jefferson Park, at Patriots Park, wherever I was playing basketball. And it was just like, this dude's fucking cool. You know, he's not a bad guy. It just happened that one time. And he got socked up by my pops. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's rough, man. My, my dad, uh, my dad never really told me to fight people. He would just say like, um, he really was a peaceful guy, but he was also old. He was when I was born, he was fifty one. So by the time like I'm like a teenager, he's kind of old, you know. Mm-hmm. And so he'd always be like, you know, just don't start fights. Just be aware of that if you, you know, you kill somebody sometimes, and you know that. There's consequences for that shit, too. You know, you didn't mean to kill the guy. You're just trying to defend yourself. You know, there's consequences. And he said, also, if you could just avoid it, avoid it, man, because it's just not worth it. Um, yeah. But he'd also say, too, if someone came at you, not necessarily, like, swinging, but he's like, if someone walks up to you, that's trash. You need to throw something away. Like, yeah, I'm going to empty this out. Oh, yeah, you can throw it in there. Um, what do you call it? Uh. He said if anybody came up at you like with aggression, not, not not swinging, but just like coming at you like, oh, this motherfucker wants something, like he wants to fight or something. He's like, if they have a closed fist, hit the fucker first. Yep. Kind of how you said about the shirts and shit and the, and the slip-ons and shit. Yeah. He was like, he's like, if that fool has a fist and he's coming at you, don't wait for that fucker to hit you. Fucking clock him. Take flight. Oh, man, right. Because <laughs> how many times you were the second one to hit and the teacher sees you or the fucking cop sees you? But you get that first hit off, and no one fucking can be the wiser. Yeah, it's tactical too, bro. So uh, one thing I like to talk about, um, I, I like to try to sneak it into the, the interviews here and there. <coughs> so I like to learn about someone's like philosophy or, or kind of the, uh, their, mindset. Their, yeah, their mindset on certain like subjects. Okay. So like, uh, one thing I like to ask you, and I think it's something I want to start out with everybody is, why are we here? Why do you believe we're here as human beings? Like, why do you exist? I think we're here for a bigger purpose. And it's not for us. If you think about yourself and your purpose, you've missed the whole point, bro. The purpose and the point of this is others. You know, what is your legacy that you're going to leave when you pass on? For me, it's the lives I've affected. It's the moments that we've shared. It's the time that we've... uh, you know, spent together, memories. So really it should be like, how many great memories can you have in this world and how many people can you, you know, positively affect in a positive manner? I think like, it's just like I always say, what you what energy you put in this universe, you'll get out. So if you want to put negative energy, that's what you're going to receive, reciprocate. But at the same time, if you can, you can make an impact, you can leave a presence and not in wealth, but just who this person was. Like, when I when they, when they remember me, I want them to fucking smile, not be like, oh, fuck that guy. Fucking douchebag. Like, that's it. That's it. Like, I mean, yeah, we're supposed to reproduce, you know, all that kind of shit. I have a daughter, you know, if you want to have kids. That's, but not everyone needs to have kids to make an impact in this world. You know what I mean, there's other ways. And that's the beauty of life is we can find our own little paths and our own little journeys. But that's what it's really about, though, the journey. You know, people always want to talk about the destination, but that's the thing Kobe would always preach about is like, you know, you embrace the journey, the real joy is in the journey, the struggles, the ups and the downs. And that's the experience that I'm talking about. That's that, you know, that's what it's all about right there, bud. That's interesting. You said that that's uh, what you just said about slowing down and enjoying the journey is like a big conversation in jujitsu. Mm where people are in a hurry to get their stripes, a hurry to learn shit, uh, in a hurry to be fucking Gordon Ryan, Gordon Ryan or something, some like extreme fucking badass jiu-jitsu person. <laughs> and luck. and it, it, every person I've watched starts out like that the first couple months. Mm-hmm. And then they realize the reality check of like the slow progression and that you can only learn so much in a fucking day. Mm-hmm. And how consistent are you going to be to be learning that shit every day? And, to, and you know... Did you learn how to do it when everything is right and you're in that position? Or did you learn the concept and you can do it from any angle? Because you know that all you're trying to do is bend that arm this way. And you can do that from just about any fucking angle. Mm -hmm. You just were taught to do it this way. But do you understand that it's not about 
that position is rather it's about what you're doing to that joint or what you're doing to that neck and how you can get there and how, how are you going to get there? You know, chess, playing a little game of chess right there. Um, I love how they have systems, systems for all these different techniques and strategies. Yeah. Well, well, a lot of it comes from because there's rules. And so long as there's rules, there's advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, you know, I, I haven't been to a kumite myself, you know, where, <laughs> you know, to, these motherfuckers go at it with no rules and shit. And they're fucking gouging eyes and fucking biting Achilles and shit. They punch five times in one second. Ta, 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 ta. <laughs> you know, just fucking. Oh, I know a dude that he, he does the bare, or the uh, JC knuckle. Yamas, he does the bare knuckle. Uh -huh. And uh, he was telling me that, you know, we, this guy was talking about hitting as hard as he could, hitting some foot. And he's like, nah, you can't do that shit. You hit someone as hard as you can, you're gonna break your hand. Yep. He's all. He's People all. Realize he's that. all. You can hit someone as hard as you can with the glove, but even then, you can hurt yourself. He's all. But if you Especially try to hit someone as hard technique. as you can with with your bare knuckle, he's all. You're gonna fucking break something because it's you, inevitable. He's all. That that face is hard. He's all. Uh, I was also learning about this. Uh, I'm gonna rant. There was a, a, a the, these pictures. You know, back in the day, they showed the boxers like this and shit, <laughs> yeah. and so. I've always heard people talk shit about, look how stupid these fools are. Mm. They fight like this and mm. shit. Well, what happened was that there was different rules back then. And because we have the rules that we have now about, like, you know, safety and longevity and mm -hmm. only so many fucking rounds. Well, back in the day, they fought 100 rounds and shit. Yeah, you know? so round one, 25 and shit. That's crazy. So what happened was that they, they didn't want to take on, like, long damage. And they also understood that they could break their fucking hands hitting someone in the face. So... What would happen is that these guys wouldn't go for their, each other's faces. They go for body shots. Um, and their techniques was more about trying to get a body shot, which meant that an overhand, like how we throw regular punches, wasn't really beneficial to them. According to this video, mm -hmm. it was talking about how an underhand punch would be better because they're to the body. So that's why they fought like that. Mm -hmm. So people were talking about how motherfuckers didn't know how to fight back then, but it's like, no, based on the rules that they were fighting with, that's the best way to fight. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, you know, if you're in Bellator, when you're in, in um, UFC, there's different rules and there's different things you can do because you would probably learn that if a fool, you can kick, you can knee a motherfucker in the face. Mm -hmm. But there's rules where if the fucker has his hand down, you can't do that shit. Right. You know, so even though that's the best move, you can't do it. So what's the second best move that's legal? But anyways, I went on a little rant about that shit. Um, but in jujitsu, they do talk a lot about the journey. Like, don't don't be in a rush, um, you know. And it's true, man. You meet people, you learn about their lives, um, and just like um, I think like in anything, when you, when you get into it, whether it be a church, a fraternity, an occupation, you, it kind of you, you build a network of people. And if you like those people, like you just get more into it. And jujitsu is one of those where if you get into it, most of it is not just um, improving yourself. But you're you're learning about how to have character. Like you said, like you learn that it's about the journey. And so you apply it to your life. You go like, hey, you know what? I'm going to enjoy my days and, and what I'm doing and going to school and, you know, not being like, oh, my life sucks because I'm eating ramen every fucking day. Rather, you're like, bro, I'm eating ramen today, bro. But when I fucking make it, you know, I'm going to yeah. fucking do it, bro. <laughs> But you're not like smoked out or smoking shit trying to say that. You know, you're you're like actively trying to do something with your life. You're not smoked out. <laughs> not making <it> spread. What's <laughs> the blaming on Cheetos and shit? Do you have a uh uh I made it kind of concept in your in your mind of like not necessarily like oh I'm on top of the world, but more like I'm gonna <coughs> I'm an established comedian. Okay. Um that's a good question. I really haven't defined what me making it is more so what I'm doing. You know, am I consistent? Am I continuing this journey? Like, am I in that mode where I can't settle for anything else but to be the best I possibly can? Because I'm the type of person I'm never satisfied. So I don't think I'm going to be personally able to sit back one day unless I'm done, retired, and dead almost like, Okay, this is what I accomplished. That's not how my brain works, bro. The way I operate is constant improvement. You know, I'm a process of improvement manager for work. Like, I am never, I'm a Virgo. I'm never fucking satisfied. I'm always detail-oriented about things of improvement, increasing productivity, or being more efficient. So I don't think I'll, even when I do a joke, like, 
two days later, that joke's trash in my eyes. I can I, I can make it better now, you know. But as far as like sitting back and you know, yeah, um, a comedy special. I would like to do a showcase with my buddies. We all do like you know twenty thirty minute sets, and then we put it out there and it's a fucking success and we go on tour. That right there would be a dream come true, and I could sit back and say we did it. That'd be an accomplish, and that's gonna happen. There's no doubt in my mind the work and effort that me and my boys put in. Like, there's no denying. There is no denying. Even you can try all you want, but like, it is in the inevitable. You know that work, that ethic, that time. You can't beat that. You know, if I'm getting, it's just like Kobe. It's that mama mentality, man. I'm up every fucking morning putting in this work. Are you? Are you at work working or are you working? You see what I'm saying? Like I'm working. All the damn time. My brain does not stop. I'm sitting on the toilet coming up with a better joke than you right now. I'm efficient, motherfucker. I'm at it. So there's no way you're going to stop me from getting there. All you're going to see is me proceed to get better and better. And then you're going to have to come to realization, fuck, I can't stand this dude, but he's fucking good. Have you, in the time you've done comedy and all the places you've gone, took notice of someone where you're like, Either why are you wasting your time if you're not gonna try, or how can someone not improve? <laughs> like I've seen this guy <coughs> here, and he's trying, you know, but like why? Why is he not improving? I'll give you a good example. <laughs> <laughs> I got locked up for three weeks. Oh, I shit. get locked up for three weeks, right? And all I do in jail is write, dude. They fucking, you know, on Friday. I don't know if you know on Fridays, but on Fridays, like when the commissary comes in. Like, everyone does, like, this big old thing, right? Sometimes it's Thursdays. Depends on where you're at. But, yeah, every fucking commissary day, uh, they all have their little snacks and everything. They turn off the fucking TV for me to do fucking open mic. That's what's up. Yeah, bro. Like, I didn't think that shit would happen. I was just talking out loud one day. And they're like, hey, why don't you do a set for us? I was like, if we can get the TV on all the day, we'll turn that shit off. And I was like, I knew that's a big deal. That's a fucking yeah. big deal. Because there's actually rules about who, yeah. who holds that TV. And yeah. shit. Like, who turns it on, who turns it off, you know? There's so many rules in there, bro. And what's crazy is I'm not, like, a rule guy. I don't really, but I, I just, I'm me. And I think me naturally is respectful. So it's it's appreciated. The Yavero was just watching you fully. Like, look, 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 look at this motherfucker, right? <laughs> they, they started calling me OG right off the bat. Because I'm just older, you know, but I, they can tell from, I guess, what I look like or my perception or whatever they, they have of me. It's just, I've been through it, you know, and I'm not here to be bullshit. I'm just trying to get by just like everybody else, man. But, uh, okay, so I was getting off topic. Um, I come back after fucking three weeks mm -hmm. and I'm just curious. I'm like, how many of these people that I go to this open mic at Tumblr are going to say the same goddamn jokes that they were saying three weeks ago with nothing added, nothing changed and the same fucking variation? And then I hear this ninety like percent. And then I heard this dude tell his cat effing joke and his rabbit effing joke or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm just I like, oh my god! I just I don't want to call out anybody, but it's just so primitive to me to to be in that same mindset and thinking like I'm doing comedy, like pronouncing the people I'm a comedian. No, you're not. You're like a fucking rerun, bro. You're a rerun. You're doing the same bits. Yeah, you're a over. rerun that nobody wants to watch. You're, you're filling in dead air. The number <laughs> one greatest. Uh, 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 somebody gave me like a little praise, right? The best thing I heard ever was when they said, bro, I can hear you tell the same joke. Never the same. It don't matter. It may be the same premise, but you're adding something new. You got this or this angle to it or you pivot this point. You're always trying. I was like, that's just who I am. I, I love you for saying that, though, man, because I appreciate that. Because someone recognizes it. And it's nice to have that because uh, I've seen, again, doing doing shows with, with G, where depending on the price they paid was the way they told the joke. Mm. Not like the energy or anything like that. But okay. nah, there, there's the, the, the two-minute... Version, the version, yeah, of, of the package, yeah. the, the bronze package. You know? <laughs> I love it. I love and it. And there's the triple diamond package. Oh yeah, where this this motherfucking joke don't end. It's two minutes with a tag of two minutes mm -hmm. and another two minutes, and then I'm gonna go on with my other shit, and then I'm gonna bring it back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that is triple, so true. That's a triple, that's a triple diamond package right there. It's real though. When it gets to that point, it's real because like, especially with the crowds too. Like, if the crowd is like bullshit, 
you don't deserve my grade A shit. You know what I mean? I'm just going to give you a tidbit, like a snippet of it. You're going to like it, and then I'm going to keep it moving because, you know what, you guys don't want to put in the work or time or the, the effort in the show. That's fine. I, I like, I'm big on energy, bro. I'm really big on energy. When I get into a room, and it doesn't even have to be a lot of people, but if the people are good people, if they came with the purpose of laughing, if they came with a reason, like, I respect that. So I'm going to give you my undivided best possible. And I'm not there to half-ass shit. You know, that's more like a petty thing that I do in a situation like somebody's wronging me or something that's going on and I'm just like, fuck this place, you know? Yeah. And then I'm just like, whatever. But when it comes to the crowd, like, they deserve the best of me. If they choose to, if they choose to be participants in it, you know, yeah, it's like in a mutual agreement where we're going upon. Like you came here for a reason, not because the football game's on or this. And those are tough ass fucking rooms too. Like you go to a biker bar, but that's a challenge too. Like I never seen a room I didn't want. Didn't mean I liked it, but I want to hit every room. I want to be in every situation. You know, I want that muscle memory of knowing this motherfucker right here. This is what he wants. Yeah, I know what he wants. Have you come across, ch- oh, everybody has different names. So I've heard chuckle bitches. Chuckle fuckers. Chuckle fuckers. Uh, any, any thoughts on that subject? Have you, have you seen it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think that's cool? Do you think it's kind of lame? Do you, do you like, it's like, it's just another fucking genre. I definitely think there is a, like a version of, you know, the basketball groupies, mm-hmm. the chuckle fuckers. That's really what they are is they're groupies. They go to a lot of the shows um, the different different comics they're banging. What's crazy is like they could make a fucking showcase. Uh, they could do a festival <laughs> with all the comics that they've slept with. Sometimes it's crazy, and I get it. You know, hey, if that's your lane, so be it. Be a chuckle fucker. But what's crazy to me is when like it, it gets thrusted in front of me. Like, bro, there was this time I was watching this comic. I'm not gonna use any names, but this one person was getting fingered by this other person in my line of sight of watching a comedy show. And that's where I draw the fucking line. I wanted to go over there and choke these motherfuckers out. Both of them. Both of them are in the game, been in the game for a while, whatever. And I was just like, fuck, man. I came here to watch a show, not to see your show. Had it been two chuckle bitches, would you have been mad? Still. (laughs) Still, bro. I I didn't come here for that. If I want that, I'll go on fucking, you know. I'm the entertainment, bitch. (laughs) You're fucking with my shit. This is my sanctity right now. And it's like you're in my line of view. Like, I can't avoid it. Like, everywhere I look, it's there. Like, I had to move. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to go outside. And it's all the server and shit. <laughs> it's like, man, get your finger out my fries and shit. I went outside to smoke. And then I told I told my boy, I just took it it out. You know, I was just like, I got to get this shit off my chest so I can fucking re- decompress, you know? It's best to let it out. So I did. And I just went back and everything was fine afterwards. The only, the only time I, I took notice of it, um, I wasn't really considering the person a chuckle fucker. I thought it was just a person really trying to do comedy for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then kind of, you know, whatever, where it gets around, people like to brag and whatever the fuck. And so I took notice that, like, like uh, it's one thing when, like, you have, like, the groupies, right? You want to call them groupies. Um, it's one thing if they're groupies. But then, like, it's kind of weird when they end up dating one of the comics that's fucking weird bro or they get married i haven't seen that yet <laughs> no no but i did. but i can see i, I can imagine I, I remember I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you one i don't want to give too much detail let me see one of the comics had uh a party i won't say what type because <laughs> Then I'm narrowing down. But anyway, it was just a party, right? All the comics went to hang out. And there was obviously the people who do comedy, um, the people who are somehow related to the people who do comedy, and then the fans, right? The people who kind of hang out and don't they don't do comedy. They talk about wanting to do comedy someday, mm-hmm. but they're just kind of hanging out. Anyways, the chuckle fuckers, some ways. Well, anyways, um, I show up, I was a little bit new and it was like kind of the, one of the first times I got invited to one of the, the gatherings. Mm-hmm. So I go to this gathering and then, um, I'm talking, I'm talking to one chick and then I'm talking to another chick and then I'm talking to a couple other comics. And then it kind of gets to me. I'm kind of understanding that like these two people used to date and they feel a little awkward around each other. And then, um, this other person used to date so-and-so and then that's, mm-hmm. and so I was just kind of like listening and like, it's like, whatever. And then um, this one dude is um, 
telling me he looked kind of sad, right? I won't say his name. He just looked kind of sad, and I was like, "You all right?" He's like, and he's just drinking by himself in the kitchen and shit. And I was just like, "All right, whatever. I'm not gonna keep trying to pep this guy up and shit. I'm just gonna go outside and have fun with the fucking games." And so I go out there, and this chick is um, talking to me. I never met her before, mm-hmm. and she was like, "Hey," well, and she was like, "Oh, I seen you a couple of times, blah, blah blah iceberg." And I was like, "Yeah." She's like, well, she's like, "You're funny." I was like, "All right." And then I was like, oh, what are you guys doing? Like, oh, we're going to start a game of uh, ping pong or ping pong. Um, was it beer pong? Mm-hmm. Beer pong. Do you want to play? I was like, yeah, I'm down. Let's fucking do it. And so we start playing and play a game. And then she like the night's going and stuff. And then next thing you know, this girl is telling me like random shit. We're like, like, where is this going? Like, you know I mean, is this bitch just fucking ranting or is this bitch fucking telling me some shit where I wasn't interested anyways. But right. You know I mean, but I was still trying to figure out. like Throwing fillers like, out. Yeah. Because she was just like, I just love sucking dick. Mm. And I was just like, God, that's a, <laughs> I made the same sound. I was like, mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. all right, tell me, more. tell me more, <laughs> tell me more. And so, um, and so she, uh, she just kind of makes those passes, you know, where she's making these comments about just, you know, needing some dick to suck and how she loves sucking dick and she could go for sucking the dick. And I'm just kind of like ignoring it, which I felt bad too because she was throwing it out there yeah really and, hard. and, and then i was kind of like all right and so and for all i knew i'm glad i didn't i didn't know who she was or what was going on in the moment but I, later on i kind of figured it out and shit so i'm mm-hmm. just like oh okay and so um i go back inside and the dude is still fucking sad bro and so all of a sudden he tells me that he liked that girl mm. and that he had um I guess they had broken up or something, and then like, she's still hanging out, and now she's trying to suck, <laughs> suck off other comics and shit. Yeah, <laughs> and this that's gotta be rough. This, and this one still has like feelings for her. I could tell. Obviously, he's all sad, right? Yeah. And so then I'm not gonna tell this fool like, bro, this bitch is just trying to suck my dick outside. <laughs> Hey, bro, she really likes sucking dick, dog. She really does. <laughs> hey, bro. And all, the only thing it really did though was kind of like exactly what you're saying. I was just kind of like, that shit must be good. This was that sprung. She did something to this fool, mm-hmm. and I was like, was it sucking the his dick? You know, and so <laughs> long, it's really uh, hard. It's but, really hard to get rid of somebody that like, sucks really good dick, dog. Like they really got to piss you off. <laughs> And so, like, maybe maybe like a hour later or something, you know, you just get lost in the party and shit. Yeah. The next time I'm, like, thinking, like, um, what happened to the beer pong game? Like, I thought we were playing, still playing beer pong. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, what happened to the Wego? And then also, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I was like, what happened to this girl? And so, I put two and two together. They both got drunk enough to where, like, they went to the car and, like, I knew they went I'm to the gonna car. I'm going to guess she sucked dick. So I'm, I'm going to assume that she, <laughs> she got to suck a dick, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, But I was like, she was going to suck a dick, you know? Yeah. Women. And it wasn't the one she wanted to go to, and she knew that dick, right? In my mind, I'm like, she knew that dick, and she was like, I'm still going to try to find a better dick like, or, or uh, another dick. Comfortability. That's sad. You get comfortable with stuff. She, he's like, she don't like him. Not even his dick. And he's there in the kitchen drinking by himself, sad. That's just crazy. Yeah, I don't get that shit, man. Like, for me, like, I'm so focused on where I'm going. Like, even chicks that I talk to, like, it has to be known. Comedy is priority. Like, everything falls behind that. And if you don't accept that, Tough shit. I really don't give a fuck, you know? And I think that's why me being single for so long really kind of helps me being in the comedy scene because I'm so not focused on, like, chicks are all over the place. Like, my homegirl was telling me, she's like, all these beautiful women are at your show. Look at this, da 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 And I was just like, they're homies. They're friends. They're they're supporters, really. Yeah. Do I want to fuck all my supporters and ruin the support? Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of taint it if you do that. And one of the comics that I met in the very beginning, it was so funny. This is a great story of this guy. <laughs> He's literally telling me how his pro he's on plenty of fish and he's promoting his comedy, right? And he's meeting all these chicks and he's banging all these chicks that go to his show. But it's a bad thing because then the other chick goes to the show and then all this drama unfolds. And as he's telling me, this chick walks up to our table and is like, why haven't you responded to my text? And I was like, oh, shit, like real time right here. 
I've seen experience, you know. And I was like, at that point, I was like, there's no way. There's no way not with a 10-foot pole would I get that close, you know. I just, I want to keep my sanctity pure right now. So if it's something outside of that area of vicinity, great. If it's something I can, like, get a little change from my what I'm doing to get away from things, like decompress, great. I love going on trips out of town. I love going places. I like your Trump pose right there. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the power stance. But, yeah, this is my back starting to hurt, so I'm excited. <laughs> Need more support. I'll pull my shirt right good. Up. But, uh, uh, we'll, we'll we'll start wrapping up then. Um, also, so we can take a little break. Mm. Um, any any shows coming up? Anything you want to promote? Obviously, there's uh, you know the comedy clubs that we have. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, jokes on you. Every Monday, uh, it is a roast battle uh, setting. The best thing about it is anyone can come in and roast. So like your mom and your dad, if they had beef, they could come and roast each other. We have people that can help write. Um, and we have tons of comics that are uh, at our disposal if need be. But I could just imagine, like, we had a, a, a couple come in, a boyfriend and girlfriend. And some of them are, you know, they're, they're struggling comics. So it really brought a different feel to it. So I definitely like how we're doing a, a DeSouza Merrill style where we show a video clip in the beginning and we talk shit and we have an audience uh, microphone so the audience can get involved. Really helps them get their heckling out of the way before the show starts, I think. Yeah. So they get all that shit out there, and then we're like, okay, shut the fuck up now. <laughs> and then we do the the um, the improv mic, so you have over 100 uh, suggestions that come up on the screen. We have a green screen. We can really record. Some pretty cool stuff we're doing there. And eventually, like, it's, it's like you were saying earlier, Mondays is like one of the slowest days I ever hear from all the clubs. Well, we're developing this, you know, this Monday, this Monday show that's live. And eventually it's going to be on Patreon. It's going to be a big thing. I could tell. Uh, so we got jokes on you every Monday. Um, of course, you got the open mics at the well. You have Sundays like today. Try it out. You have uh, the Thursday Hallmark. And then you got the Taco Tuesday. Uh, Tamblers on Wednesdays. But uh, as far as shows goes, I know I got some coming up in Delano. I'll be there. And I also have a Hanford show on the November 2nd. Uh, Hanford, that's uh, is that the the something line? The Trim station? Bab stuff, yeah, the Trim base ba- baseline or something. I'm not sure, but I know I got um the oh Trim. Trent Bab is what you said. Yeah, yeah, that's the second Trent Bab show in Hanford. I did uh, a I did a writing session with that fool one day. We were chilling at my apartment, and he was like, um, "Has this?" I forgot what the 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 setup was, but it was pretty much like um being a white guy dealing with Hispanics and shit. So I was like, "What's like the go to?" You know. Uh, you know, I caramba or some bullshit, you know, like, yeah, you know, yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't want him to do that one. So I was like, he's like, Hey man, like, and, and what would be a good tag right there? And I was like, ah, oh, fucking, you know, you could always say like they're, if they're mocking you, pendejo, that's usually a common thing that we do to people. We mm-hmm. call them pendejos and shit or pelon or so we call them yeah. something white, slang, like, slang. some slang, something that they're not really going to know that we're making fun of them or some shit. Right. At mm-hmm. first. And so I think uh, the concept was like stupid or something. So I was like, pendejo, you know, pinchy pendejo or something. So he's like, oh, okay, pinchy pendejo. I was like, okay. Well, one of the other comics had a joke where his punchline was pinchy pendejos or something. And so I guess these two start, start going, this motherfucker stole my joke. Oh, my God. And then so I was like, nah, you can just have the same tagline, bro. You don't have, you don't have the same joke. It's just the tagline. But that tagline is a cultural tagline. It's like, not, who doesn't? You don't own the pendejo, word, you know, you like it's, a, it's a phrase. We say it all the time. I kind of felt that about when I started doing comedy. I felt George Lopez kind of did that to everybody kind of where he took these tags that were just common amongst our culture that we use all the time to laugh about it. Mm-hmm. And now if you use it, people think you're fucking doing his jokes and you're like, nah, man, That's I've been crazy. hearing this shit since I was a kid. It's just That's it's like crazy. saying it's like it's like him owning owning Pepito. Uh-huh. It's like if he goes and tells a Pepito joke And now you're like oh I'm gonna tell a Pepito joke And they're like oh you stole that shit from George Lopez It's like nah that shit's been going on forever yeah. uh, I, I I do use a lot of slang And it's just stuff that you grow up with like you said uh, Last night when I said Spencer You know mm-hmm. like Dispensa Everybody yeah. knows that shit in the culture You know but when you, when you hear it in that Format it's like fucking hilarious uh, No mames people say That shit um uh, I say tu, tu, tu sabes, you know, because I I use it in that form when I'm using it, and then everyone starts chuckling. Yeah. It's just something that it, it it feels at home, I think too. Like we can relate to that. It's a it's a that that connective tissue I talk about. And also those those words because those words have or those phrases have meaning to us. Um, you can distinguish where someone's from, even though you're speaking the same language. Mm-hmm. Like if someone says vale, 
Like I know he ain't from Mexicali. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. he's, not, he's not even from Tijuana. Like he's he's fucking Sonora or or like uh, probably even probably even more south. You know? Mad regional shit, dude. That's crazy about our culture like that too. And that's why you know when you go to jail, I say Cubo, I say Cubo, and then uh, people know that more as like California, mm. um, Tijuana. Um, did I say that? Oh, arre. I say arre too. When someone says something to me, but like instead of saying okay or or si, I'll be mm-hmm. like, arre pues. Mm-hmm. Arre. And then when I say arre, people know that I have family from TJ. Somehow I'm connected to people mm-hmm. from from northern uh, southern northern southern California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it's just like you 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 catch those things, uh, or you even know if someone's Puerto Rican or or Brazilian or something from like little subtle words and share how they say something. Yeah, that shit is mad regional. I didn't realize it. You know what? When, when you go to jail. The first thing they ask you, are you a homie or are you a paisa? Oh, shit. So, I'm a homie. And then the second thing they ask you is, what part of Mexico is your family from? That's literally the next fucking question. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't fucking know. I'm fucking yeah, whitewashed. Crazy. Yeah, but that's how deep it is because they want to know what region. Why? Because cartels. Think oh, about wow. it. Yeah, because the Mexican mafia and so it's just all connected. Yeah, I could see that. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, though. Now, in prison, would you would you would you shank a fool for for if they told you like, hey, bro, you gotta go shank this one? The thing is about like that environment is you just become a different person. You disconnect to who you really are, and in order You're to just survive, the game and survive. In order to survive, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I have no problem fucking a fool up I, for the right reason. I thought you were gonna say just fucking fools. No, <laughs> like, I'll fuck a fool, right? <laughs> hey, 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 asshole's the same color in the dark, man. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, shit. <laughs> It's a bad joke, I tell. Hey, 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 they all cry the same. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a little Popeye in them. Oh, shit. <laughs> Give me some chon chon. Nah, man. I, I, just to, to go off a little bit on that, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. one of the things that I, I that I talk about growing up is just how culturally even the language changes as we get older. But I remember when I was a kid, I remember kids would tell each other to suck each other's dicks like oh fuck yeah fuck suck my dick or shit and i always thought it was kind of weird i was like that's a little gay like why would you tell a dude to suck your dick so i never really used it i never i never unless it was like it was priceless at the mm-hmm. moment to mm-hmm. say some fucking shit like that comedic timing yeah yeah some com- comedic timing on mm-hmm. that then but other than that i was just like that's just fucking this sounds gay man well that's actually regional you know that that's really? new york based is it? Yeah. So New York and Boston, they suck my fucking dick, and it becomes like a verb, a pronoun, an adjective. They use it in different formats, like that "your" that I do. Yeah. "Your" is a is a hello in New York. So every time when I go up on the mic, I give a little shout out to that shit because of the, the Susan Merrill show. They go "your," and that's kind of become my ad lib now. Like people know that that and fucking um, I digress. I say that shit a lot. <laughs> I forgot what the point was I was saying. What was I saying? I forgot what the fuck I said when you said what you said. Oh, man, I'm fucking high. Are you? You've yeah. been hitting that shit, bro. Yeah. Um, Caught the vapors. We're going off on... Goddamn. Oh, gay shit and fucking oh, suck my dick. Oh, yeah, people saying... So and so another thing, too, was like I remember even... In, it was even in music. It did not age well, bro. I remember there's... I think... I want to say it's like an NWA song. And I want to say it's Nate Dog or, or Dre where they're like, I even made him suck my dick, and he tried to make me nut, but I ain't gay, or some shit like that. And I was like, that's hella gay. I remember even hearing it, and I was like, there's nothing gangster about that shit, bro. Like, that's hella gay. Dude, I can always go back to the day when I heard Easy e talk about transvestites for the first time. Like, that was so eye-opening. I pulled down the pennies and the yeah. bitch had a dick. Bigger than mine or some shit, Oh, right? my yeah. God. Like, it was so mind-blowing at that point because I really didn't know anything as a kid. What did he say he did? did he, say he, he was doing a, a bank robbery. He was doing a bank robbery, and then he pulled this chick to the side that what you thought was a bitch was nothing but a man. Oh, my God. That was so fucking hard. But it was like, it was done artistically. Yeah. So that's why it impacted me so much. And then I realized, like, oh shit, there's transgender people. I didn't fucking know. Thank you, Easy E, for making me more knowledgeable, dog. Who would have thought a fucking hood dude, crack fucking dealer, is going to introduce a kid to fucking day? That's being woke, (laughs) if I ever heard. My favorite bank robbery rap song is by Tech Nine. Mm. 
he has one where he's talking he's talking to the teller and then he starts making she's like hey you're tech nine for yourself i know you're from high school you used to make beats and shit come on do it for me he's like nah 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 not right now man i'm trying to do this she's like come on man come on he's like ah all right man he's like he's like making his beat and then he's like he's all i'm I'm here to rob the bank and blah 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 (laughs) you asked for it he got it he got a was it he got a baton but i got a shotgun and some shit like (laughs) i was like oh shit that's just hard yeah he went hard tech nine um i fuck bro um i was doing a comedy show at the at jerry's pizza Mm mm-hmm and Corina, the the owner, and her, and her, oh, fuck, her husband's name is escaping me because I, I didn't have to say his name so many times. But uh, Corina, I remember her name. She's the 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 owner, the female owner. Um, she gave me some free tickets to um, I want to say it was Tech Nine. Was it no? Was it was it Tech Nine or was it um, Andre Nicotine? No, I want to say it's Tech Nine. Tech Nine, and I was like, fuck yeah, I want to go see that shit. And so, I'm so old, bro. I'm so old. I used to go to con. I I never went to concerts. I would go to like maybe like a show or something, but not like a full blown promoted shit. You know, mm-hmm. like a concert. And so I'm like, oh, tickets say fucking ten. I'm gonna be there. I show up at fucking nine thirty. Next, you know, I'm fucking drunk, bro, because I've been drinking by myself. <laughs> it's about to be eleven and shit, and this fool still ain't there. Oh, they show up late, mad oh, late. Oh, bro, I fucking, I was like buzzed, and I was like, you know what? I'm fucking buzzed, and like, I don't think this was showing up. And they're like, his RV's outside. I was like, when is he getting down? They're like, I don't know. Like, I think, I think, feel like it. I think what it was is, um, they were trying to buy some time or some share, maybe like they were short cash. Not, 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 not Jerry's Pizza, but the people putting on the show. The promoters. Yeah, the promoters. It's the number one reason. And so, like, uh, so we were just kind of like waiting, waiting, and I got to the point where I was just like, you know what? I'm buzzed. I'm just gonna get a fucking Uber, go home. So I went home. I missed the fucking show, bro. And it was probably going to be the, the only time I had a chance to see Tech Nine because I ain't paying for no tickets. I never paid yeah. for to see nobody. Even the comedy shows. I go to most of the comedy shows because I know I can get them for free. Yeah, shit. no shit, huh? <laughs> free, free. Yep. Man, I went bro, to. Have you ever been to a comedy? I'm gonna rant a little bit on this. Have you ever been somewhere, bro? And like they don't know your comic. Not like out of town. I'm talking about like local, bro. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. Oh man, I fucking I felt so embarrassed the other day. I had I had that happen to me where, um, not big enough to be noticeable. I was going to this show with another comedian, right? So we were, we were always going to it, traveling to it, and checking it out here and there. And so one day, I went by myself. And so when I went by myself, um, I went to go see the show because the 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 person putting on the show, the promoter, wanted me to see the show. And so I was like, all right. And so I show up and the person in the front, I'm, I'm going to say like, I never talked to them, but I, they see me all the time. And so when I walked in there, I walked up like trying to walk in, she goes, it's going to be $20. And I was like, huh? She goes, it's going to be $20 to get in to see the show. It's $20. And I was like, oh, give me a minute, man, bro. I was about to leave. <laughs> I literally was calling the Uber when the promoter fucking was like, "Hey, hey, hey iceberg, iceberg." He's all, he's like, "Hey, let him in, let him in, let him in, just let him in." Yeah, but I was, I was about to leave, fool. Dude, I was just at a comedy, and club. it wasn't like, "Oh, you should know who I am." Right. It was more like I frequent the place. Like you, you were being a dick. You had to be being a dick. You had to have done that on purpose because. I know that person doesn't like the other comic that I was like visiting with, and mm. I just happened to be by myself. So I, don't, um, I think she associated me with him rather right. than going like, "Hey, I think the promoter. You should be worried about the promoter. What the promoter thinks. The guy wants me to be here. And, like he asked me to be here. So like, whatever. Like, what does it matter to you? You know, we don't charge comics. You know, we don't. We just don't do it. We don't charge each other. Yeah. I don't know how that started, but I just always knew it was a rule, and I just I'm cool with it. I'll give you an example. Um, I go to Timbler like a lot mm-hmm. for the comedy. And, like, the same dude helps me, like, all the time. And I've told him numerous times I, I do I do the comedy and open mic. But, like, it never fails. He'll just be like, oh, what are you here for? What are you guys up to? Uh, you getting to check out the comedy show? Like, you motherfucker. He told me. I was like, I see you all the time. But it's all good. That's just how it is. You know, I was at a comedy club down in L.A. And I had told the bartender, like, I'm on the show. I told the, the manager that I was on the show. And I had to repeat myself over and over, like in these different circumstances, like they were trying to get us in or this and that. The guy who I was needing to talk to was in there. I was just going to go see him real quick. And I just had to keep telling him, I'm a, I'm a comic. It was like, it was almost like stupid. Like, I'm a comic. I'm the comic. I'm a comic. 
Like it's so prevalent. Like it's I'm nobody, you know, and it's it's humbling. But actually, that's what I want it to be. I don't want nobody to know me, you know, because when it does happen, it's gonna fucking impact even more. You know, that's what drives. That's the shit that drives me. Like I want people not to know me. So like one day they're like, oh, I know this motherfucker, because it's gonna change. Yeah, with the work. Everything with work, man. Yeah, and, man. And, and and serious commitment. Not just like, you know, like, oh, if I just keep going up to these open mics, I'm going to get better. It's like, no, Mm-mm. you have to work on your timing. You have to, you know, some. I mean, you think it's funny, but you know, it's not working out, bro. Just try something else. I think the hardest, <sighs> another observation that I made about comics, and, and I don't really go around telling comics this, but it is something that I'll talk about on the podcast, I guess, is my observation of people who don't do new material all alcoholics bro. hard alcoholics yeah definitely yeah this just on, on the road all the people that i was like fuck this fool is a hard drunk like there i knew they were fucked up before they went up or i knew they were fucked up right after they went up or or that they gotta take shots you'll see people they'll take a shot here and there and they're just more for their fucking nerves and shit because yeah. they're, they're alcoholics and they gotta have a drink and shit yeah and um the the yeah. first fucking pattern that i noticed was like they all every time I see them, it's the same set, mm-hmm. same set. Yeah, been telling those jokes for who knows thirty, forty, you know, ten years. I had to get told to stop doing new material, to focus on a type five, mm-hmm. and I respected that conversation because he was right. I'm so hell bent on having new shit each week. Dude, like every show, every open mic I would go to, I'd try to have something new, you know, like, just, but it wasn't, it was just natural because throughout the day, my brain's always working. I see something funny in an angle I want to touch. I see something in current events. Here I go. Let me talk about this. I was Mr. Current Event for a long time where I just, I just challenged myself. Something new. I was just going to throw in the fucking set. Something current. Boom. Just to test myself, just to, you know, to flex that muscle, to get that workout in. And I don't think a lot of dudes think like that you know what i mean like they they have a few uh things that they're working on they want to perfect it that's great i can do that too but then on top of that i can add something at the end or the beginning or in the middle that i've been trying to work out i got something new on the table i always would do that like either in the beginning the middle or the end i'll add a new topic or a new something that i'm working on i have to it's just the way my brain works like i'm always trying to find that nest best thing i have these great bits but what's going to be the next one until I go through this process of, you know, figuring it out, there's some things that I think are going to be great. And I try so hard to make it good. And it's just fucking trash. And then that's the hardest thing I think for comics to do that I notice is like, let that bit go, bro. Let it go. Why is it after three weeks of me being in jail, you're still doing the same tags, the same punch, and it's still not hitting? Like, get the point. All right. Just because you, uh, it's, it's not that you touch, touch on the subject. It's more just the way you express your frustration with it that I related to. Have you ever watched a comic do his set with the fucking uh, the patrons of the fucking place, like people who just came to fucking eat, mm-hmm. and or and just there happens to be a fucking open mic, and they didn't even catch the open mic, but people were just still hanging out afterwards because yeah. you're not allowed to go anywhere else. And so, um, you ever caught someone doing their set? Yeah. Does it bug you, or you're just kind of like, ah, it's whatever. To me, to me, it kind of came off as like, like, uh, is there a genuine conversation with this motherfucker? Because it just seems like everything is just the timing to throw in one, one of their bits. I think it was just being corny at the time because mm. they were just implementing it because at the time it kind of made sense. But I was just like, bro, <laughs> I'm good. It wasn't funny in real life. It's not funny on oh, stage. <laughs> fuck, bro. What's the harshest thing you've heard as a comic? The harshest thing I've heard as a comic. Oh, your jokes aren't funny. Oh, man. But she was just being petty because I pissed her off. So I could accept that. I think for me, it was a. Uh, I, uh, I went to. I, I had problems with the old heads, right? For a little bit. Mm. And then um, and then I got this random job. And it kind of worked out because I was just like, well, fuck, I'm banned from all the mics. And not all the mics, but definitely I was banned from the consistent mics, mm-hmm. I would say. And so I happened to get this job. I got into it. Didn't really care. Um, so I was like, whatever. But one day I was like, 
I was feeling that itch, you know, that like that I had when I first started, and I was like, "Fuck, I gotta, I wanna, I wanna go to the fucking mic and try some jokes," you know. I'm like, "Fuck, I fucking miss doing this shit." And so I was like, "Nah, I'm busy," and so I didn't, I wouldn't go, you know. And then I, I get that fucking itch, and I was like, "I gotta fucking go, I gotta check out a mic." So I go to a mic, bro. I want to say like, let's. I would go like maybe every three months, right? I want to say like every fucking mic I went to, bro. Some random person would be like, "Oh yeah, you're Iceberg. Yeah, I heard about you." And I was, and it was never like, and any, it never felt good, mm-hmm. you know. So I was always like, and I remember like every time, man, every time I'd go, and I'm like, man, it fucked up the mood. It fucked up my mood so much, bro. It wouldn't fuck up my comedy, but it just fucked up my mood because I was like, ah, man, I'll see a couple of the guys, see who's who's kind of let shit fucking you know go, moved on with their life about bullshit, you know. So I was like, and then I was like, so what I would do after that was I, I would still go to the mics, but. I just wouldn't talk to anybody, bro. I'd just be like, I don't want nobody saying some fucking shit that throws me off and shit. So I was just kind of chill in the back. But then that kind of backfired. I'm ranting now, but mm-hmm. it kind of backfired because then people thought I was stuck up and like not wanting to fucking talk to people and shit oh, like that. Like but you're I was, isolating yourself. But I was like, nah, I'm just kind of tired of like these new people who don't know me saying like fucking offhand comments about something they don't someone even else know me. fucking told me. Yeah, you know? they don't even know someone who has problems, you know, fucking saying rent right, right in their mouth. Yeah, I give everyone their own opportunity to fuck me over. <laughs> 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 you know, you fuck me over. Okay, cool. I know where we stand. But like I, I'm all about like even just in general, just giving people you know opportunity to be themselves. And most people are, bro. I, yeah. and, I, and I think um, you know with hey. shit in San Francisco, everybody being on fucking negative and shit. I'll tell you, man. For the most part, if you're a po- like you said earlier, if you're a positive person, that shit just sucks people in. And sometimes it does suck in people who prey on good people. Mm. But for the most part, you meet cool people, bro. You meet yeah. you meet people who who are genuine friends or people who. And they're not necessarily your friends, but they're people you can hang out with and feel comfortable. They're not going to be like trying to fucking leave you with a tab or or steal your shit in Fuck. your house. Yeah. Or, you know, like just just not be fucking weirdos and shit. You know, it's just and there's so much fucking weirdos in entertainment, bro. So many fucking weirdos like that. Yeah. What's the what's the conclusion uh, the of game. our conversation here? In game. I think I think well, we can recap on mm-hmm. um, being passionate about something and, and wanting to progress in it. Uh, is not there's no really uh there's no reason to focus on the success itself or rather the process of, <laughs> of feeling successful and getting to be you know, comfortable bro I, I think um those are some of the things that and 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 that that that's i don't think something that i mean i think i, I would say some people are genuinely born like that people who just understand you know enjoy the journey you know and i think for other people like it took something in their life yeah. to go Fuck, I'm doing it wrong. You know, I'm doing it wrong. I'm I'm fucking being negative. I'm fucking uh, I'm I'm not helping myself thinking like this, you know, and, and I should no, I should like in that situation, I should be so fucking proud of how random this all is. Yeah. And in all the randomness, like you it turned out good for you because there's plenty of people who should don't turn out and they're good people, you know, they just trust the wrong person, get taken advantage of and their ability to recover for because people don't just get jacked for their iPhones and shit. You know, people get jacked for the money they saved to start a business, bro. Yeah. You know, the fucking money they inherited. You know, people Passing get, of a people get fucked, bro. And you invest all your apples in the one basket because you trusted somebody. Yeah, they knew they, they 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 knew how to fucking get to you. They knew how to See, take it from you. That's why I have to invest in myself. There's no better. There's no better bet than on my on what I'm about to do. To me, like I could invest in crypto up to yin yang. I could invest in all these stocks and bonds. But really, the more I invest in me, my time, my energy, what I have to offer to this world, that's gonna. That's the real treasure. That's what's up. Well, that was chilling with the iceberg. Want to thank 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 my guest uh, Bobby Duran and. Um, what was it? The Bob Bob Bobby D's? Bob D's. Bob D's. You can imagine my <laughs> rap name. It was Bob D's Nuts. Yeah. Oh Even man. Bob on D's. There was so many analogies I'd use. It was funny. Uh, we touched on a lot of the subjects, uh, and like I like to tell everybody, and I, and I hope at this point, I think this would be episode around fifteen or sixteen. I hope everybody understands that there's no point to this fucking show. <laughs> there's just uh, random thoughts. You know, we have good interviews, we have bad interviews, we have fucking people entertained, we have comical conversations we have uh emotional conversations i mean it's all over the place man and um i think i thank you for coming here 
I hope to, I hope to have more of the comics come in and enjoy it and get to know me and not just go like, hey, you're that your iceberg, man. You're like, yeah, I heard about you. <laughs> <laughs> and more be like, hey, bro, like, I think if you got to meet me, yeah, you, you, would, don't, you would know why people don't like me. And it's not because I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much more to it. <laughs> All right, bro. Thank you, everybody. You guys have a good night. All right, bro. guys.